good morning good afternoon good evening everyone uh, wherever uh, you are in this world thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to us meet with us and learn about well two of our favorite topics data flow and observability so i'm ashwin kamath uh, senior product manager on the google cloud data flow team and uh, i'll let the other speakers introduce themselves as well Uh, hi everyone. I'm Conrad. Um, I'm an engineer on the Dataflow UI team. Um, I've been uh, working on this team for a few years now, and I'm very excited about observability. Hey everyone. I'm Wei. I'm a developer advocate um, working with uh, Google Cloud Data Analytics. Awesome. So yeah, um, together we would love to talk to you about um, these topics, and uh, you know I hope it is interesting. And please keep the uh, please keep this interactive. Please do uh, ask questions in the chat room, and you know we will jump in uh, to answer them. Of course, the presenters will not stop because you know we would love to continue and cover a lot of topics. Uh, but uh, your questions are valuable. Uh, if you have ideas, feedback. Um, you know, you know, we would definitely love to hear them. Please, please take this survey. Um, you can, it's a short survey. Uh, take it on your laptop um, or, or just on your phone. Um, you know, we would love to hear from you. Helps us prioritize some of these, uh, um, you know, features that we're thinking about. And in general, if you have challenges about data flow or observability, um, you know, do let us know. We would love to hear more. Uh, if you would love, uh, if you would like us to reach out and uh, discuss more in detail. Uh, please leave your, um, your contact information uh, optional but please do leave that and we would love to uh, you know get back to you so what's the agenda um you know uh, we understand some of you are well versed in data flow the others are either considering data flow or just you know thinking about it and you know playing with it so we would love to talk a little bit about why data flow why does it matter um and um, we would then you know definitely deep dive more into uh, observability capabilities of data flow and why is it different? Why is it differentiating? Why does data flow we believe, uh, and many of our customers believe data flow has uh, some of the first class, the industry leading capabilities in observability. Then we'll jump deep into the demo. And then we'll talk about some of these uh, very interesting topics, like how do we troubleshoot uh, the common uh, you know, issues or you know, uh, scenarios that users end up in using these data flow troubleshooting and observability capabilities. Uh, we would definitely talk about some of the items in the roadmap. These are asked in the survey as well, so we would love to get your feedback. Um, you know, which ones in these roadmap actually are more interesting to you? Which one you wanted yesterday versus like, you know, eh, you know, nice to have. Uh, you know, we'll consider it. So, and we'll leave some time for Q and A. With that, let's uh, jump right in and talk about why data flow. So, before we get into uh, talking specifically about data flow, you know, it starts actually with the question. The, the the business question that is evolving, right? Businesses have been talking about you know, what has happened and what can I do with that data now that I know something has happened to um, what is happening right now and what should I do about it? And that has often transformed to being uh, what should be happening as this data comes, you know, as we apply AI and ML on top of that. So um, as this shift is happening, you know, we believe businesses have to consciously uh, you know, um, um, deliberately move from thinking about data in the past and dealing with data in real time and in the future, right? And we think that is there is a, a bridge to be caused. We call them the real time transformation chasm. So the question arises: Do you and your organization have the right tools, the right infrastructure, right skills needed to cross that value bridge? Uh, and that may not happen overnight, right? Uh, and, but but it's happening everywhere. You know, no matter whether you or your organization decide to do, uh, it is real time is changing or transforming every industry um, stakeholder interaction. Think about customer engagement, employee engagement, right? Um, real time behavior analytics for M M uh, for customers and employees, uh, influential social media is you know it's 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 booming, right? So influential in engagement is happening in real time. Uh, machine interactions, failure predictions, and predictive maintenance, all that is happening in real time. And people are thinking about what can I do on top of this using AI and ML. It's uh, real time is transforming every industry. And in fact, these are you know actual industries where we do have uh, you know data flow customers uh, using the product now, right? Healthcare, um, real time patient monitoring. Uh, in finance, there is real time fraud and uh, fraud detection and prevention. 
you take uh, retail, there is personalized recommendation on the products that you would want to buy based on not just your own choices, but people in the same region or area or time zone looking at similar kind of products. Um, it's happening in social media, social marketing, uh, in manufacturing too, right? Uh, Real-time inventory management, prediction, predictive failure, uh, uh, maintenance, all that is happening in real time. So that has led to uh, the birth of at least three different kind of personas, all in the same data uh, management, uh, data engineering space, right? There are uh, traditionally there have been uh, the, the personas or the, or, the, or the users who want to ingest data into this large data warehouse for analytics. Right? And that is always happening. You have always had batch and some cases have had streaming. Uh, there has also been uh, users who want to actually continuously ingest data, aggregate, process, enrich, filter, transform them. Um, you have also used batch and streaming. Last but not least, there has been this growth of the, the new persona who are actually thinking more about real-time apps, right? We call that continuous intelligence, right? Real-time insights uh, are being generated using these tools, uh, using these services, um, um, and uh, real-time decisions are made, uh, you know, to help uh, your businesses differentiate and move forward. So where does Google Cloud and Dataflow fit in, right? Um, if these are your needs, and this is the transformation, the conscious transformation you and your business are trying to do, Dataflow and PubStar, you know, are proven at Google scale, right? Are right there at your fingertips if you have chosen Google Cloud, right? And it is truly differentiating because it is a truly unified batch and streaming platform. Period, right? And you know, this is uh, called out even by the industry. If you look at the um, analyst reports, Forrester. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, quadrant for, um, you know, uh, cloud um, data warehousing. Google has been a leader with BigQuery and all this data products, right? On the right-hand side, you can also see the recent um, streaming analytics uh, quadrant by um, Forrester, where Google is also a leader. Uh, analyst report shows that uh, data flow users say 55, they have a 55% productivity boost, 50% infrastructure cost savings, with a short payback period of a huge ROI on, right? 171% uh, ROI. Uh, and we do have customers, thousands of uh, customers uh, on Google Cloud using Dataflow today across all these uh, you know, um, various industry verticals that we spoke about, right? Telecom, media, retail, software, finance, medical, and so on. Uh, just to give a few quotes from customers, you know, before Dataflow, no one wanted to write streaming jobs because it was too difficult and frustrating. Uh, well, now 40 to 50 percent of all our jobs are being built on streaming. Uh, talking about the scale at which some of our customers use streaming today, um, you know, here is uh, you know, well, Twitter, who has 400 billion events per day being processed using Dataflow and Pubs. That is three million events per second coming through to Pubs and Dataflow, right? Um, and uh, you know, well, another one to call out is uh, Spotify, who has 20,000 plus concurrent pipelines, uh, you know, running Dataflow jobs. Um, uh, and and uh, they've been using this to transform their journey to uh, be more uh, real time and streaming, right? As about 8 million events per second being sent to PubSub and Dataflow. So, well, what is Dataflow, right? I mean, before we go into observability, let's talk a little bit about uh, Dataflow. Dataflow is, is that cloud native, unified batch and stream processing platform provided by Google Cloud, right? Where you don't have to worry about allocating clusters or servers or uh, or, or, or any, you know, even VMs or, you know, compute for uh, processing the data in real time or even in batch as it arrives, right? Dataflow in nutshell does all that for you. It's elastic, fully managed, um, scales, uh, rebalance your works, auto heals, and it comes with all the monitoring and logging configuration around it. Uh, and how is it done? I mean, you focus, you as a user focus more on your thing, which is your you, your data and your code. And for that, we have a open source uh, Apache Beam SDK, right? So you can write your applications in Go, Java, Python. Um, and if you are a, a user of, um, you know, um, uh, notebooks, and if you'd like to use notebooks more, yeah, you can use notebooks to build uh, uh, the um, uh, data flow applications as well. Uh, and if you really don't want to write any code, you can use templates, right? And we'll talk about some of that when we go through the demos. 
And so Dataflow is there, uh, the, the backend, the service that now takes your Apache Beam SDK or your Apache Beam code and you know, uh, runs them on, on the cloud. So in summary, you know, we spoke about all these features of Dataflow, uh, but today we're gonna speak more about its management capabilities, in particular, observability. So what is observability, right? Observability of managed pipelines is its ability to understand the health and performance of based on its output signals, such as metrics, logs, events, traces, errors, etc. And you know, observability uh, is quintessential. You know, very important when you are running you know business critical production apps, uh, such as those you saw from some of these customers at scale in production, right? So. Let's talk about what Dataflow offers, you know, as you run these pipelines and you know in production. So, Dataflow's observability is built in, out of the box. No config or setup is necessary. Let's make sure that sinks in. You focus on building and writing your pipelines. After you deploy the pipeline, all the observability capabilities are right there in front of you no config necessary. You do not have to deploy a monitoring stack or server. You do not have to deploy agents to you know, configure and collect data. You don't have to go and set up any sort of dashboards or you know, say configure many things. Most of the things are right there out of the box for you. And of course, you can tweak them and you're flexible to move them around and, and do more. Okay. So let's talk about some of these core features. First thing that happens when you deploy a pipeline is that, hey, you know, Dataflow has optimized my code and created a DAG or a you know data directed acyclic graph or a graph out of it, and it's going to execute that graph. So the question arises: Hey, what does my pipeline look like? What is happening in each step, and where is the time spent? Well, for that, we give you two features. Uh, we call them job visualizers, right? When you can think about them as job graph and execution details. The job graph uh, illustrates the steps involved in the execution of your job. Um, and it gives you how Dataflow has optimized your pipeline's code for ex execution after fusing the steps into stages, right? Um, and it informs you more about uh, each step and associated stages within that step, the time spent in each of the step as the pipeline continues execution. Yeah, each step in the graph displays more information such as the input, uh, uh, the data collection, the output data collection, the data freshness, the throughput of each of those so that you can understand what's happening in the stage. Another slice or another view of the same graph uh, is uh, execution details, where here we actually focus more on um, you know, the, the performance of each of the stage as the pipeline executes. And so again, uh, Dataflow breaks down your code and your steps uh, into various optimized stages. You can see here they're, they're like F35, F33, et cetera. And each step has uh, each stage has steps within it, and you can see on the right-hand side, these are all the steps, and that's where the time spent. Uh, that's where most of the time is spent in this particular stage. Uh, for streaming jobs, you can also see the data freshness over time for each of those stages, and we call out anomalies during the execution, such as possible stuckness or slowness. You know that can impact your performance, and you can zoom right in to figure out what's going on at that time. Right, uh, both. The job graph and execution details are also excellent tools for you when you are actually building, developing your pipeline and testing them. Right? You know, see how optimized is my code right before you move them into production. So great tools for you to use in your, uh, your staging environments, testing environments. Uh, just a call out, um, both these uh, in, uh, both these pieces, the job graph and execution details are available for batch and streaming and all kind of jobs. One thing in our roadmap is we are also uh, going to add hot key visualization for the batch pipelines. Uh, streaming makes more work, so streaming you know will come later. But for batch, imagine if you have the capability to also see hot keys or those elements that are taking more time to process than the others. Uh, we call them hot keys as your as your uh, graph continues execution. Okay. So the next uh, question is well. Now I understand what my job or my graph looks like, and this is how data, data flow is going to execute it, and this is what's happening. I deployed it. What's happening? Okay. What's the state and performance of my job? Are they healthy? Are there any errors? Right. Uh, 
uh, well, good news is we have job metrics, many metrics right off the bat to help you troubleshoot this job. So essentially, there are four classes of metrics. Um, you know, we bring them together in one one place so that you can view them and analyze them as needed, quickly understand the state of the job. So the four types of metrics, you know, logistically are well, data flow service metrics. Data flow service metric, uh, essentially those metrics coming from the backend uh, provided by the data flow service itself, right? Such as the latency of the job, the throughput per stage, um, or uh, think about uh, the backlog uh, as seen by every single stage, or the user processing, the, 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 the time spent in the user code per stage, et cetera. Uh, worker metrics, because data flow allocates, you know, dy dynamically allocates workers to do the job for you. Uh, though these workers have resource utilization related metrics. So you can look, uh, think about CPU metrics for these workers. Um, and you can also think about you know, the, the memory utilization for these workers. So all those metrics are brought together from the worker metrics, right, in one place. Um, Apache Beam custom metrics. So, well, you know, as your code continues execution, you may also have custom metrics that you ingest from your code. And those custom metrics are also brought under the same namespace, right? If you continue to emit them under the same job, they'll be shown in the same namespace and you can easily have all of them uh, you know, viewed in the same place. Last but not least, well, you ingest, well, there, there are logs that are produced by a data flow job. You can, using the uh, log-based metrics or logs to metric capability in cloud logging, you can convert uh, certain kind of you know, uh, logging queries uh, to view them as metrics, right? So all of these are useful things that you can view uh, to understand the performance or the, uh, her uh, the errors or health of the job. And so as you can see, we bring all of these important metrics together in one place in the job metrics tab. You can easily uh, you know, link them um, to your cloud dashboard. You can add them to a dashboard. If you see, huh, this is the one I want, this is a job or this is a, uh, the particular metric that I want to monitor more closely, you can convert them to a dashboard. If you want to create a SLO or you know, an alert policy on it, one click away, go create an alert using that. Next is logs. Um, well, in fact, logs start appearing uh, faster or sooner than the metrics the moment you deploy the job because, you know, as soon as you deploy the job, the data flow service starts, uh, you know, doing a lot of initialization operations, all the startup tasks and allocating workers, uh, triggering order scale if it's needed, all that work is done. So all that is captured in your job logs, right? Uh, so the two types of logs you have are job logs and worker logs. So the job logs talk about all these things I just mentioned, right? Uh, including what is data flow uh, service doing to manage the job for you. Um, secondly, you also have a worker log. So once the worker starts uh, you know, is, um, spinning up and processing your, um, you know, data, uh, you know, that's where your, you know, well, your data is processed and uh, um, it transformed. So all those logs, as the work done by your code, is logged in there as, um, you know, events. Um, so all your user code exceptions, even if you have an OOM exception or uh, JVM error, uh, also all sort of errors and custom errors, all those will show up in your worker logs. Uh, you can configure and modify the logging level uh, by routing uh, and as well as route these logs to a destination of your choice, right? But by default, all these logs are seamlessly integrated into Google Cloud Logging, which means with a single click, you can view all these logs in your Google Cloud Logging interface, create interactive queries on top of it, make metrics out of them, you know, create alerts out of them. It's all seamlessly integrated. So, um, okay, that's great. So we have metrics and logs, but I want to call out uh, some of the new features that we have launched, which are brand new metrics for streaming jobs. And these are new metrics for streaming jobs that use streaming engines. Right. Um, you know, so if you haven't been using Streaming Engine, uh, we would strongly recommend you to go take a look at the documentation. Consider migrating a job, and if you have questions that we uh, need to discuss, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us and you know uh, use the survey, and then we can uh, uh, discuss more. Uh, but so Streaming Engine-based jobs have a lot more metrics that help you go deeper and understand not just what happened, but why something is happening and possibly where something is happening, right? Uh, so is my job getting stuck? Well, what could be the reason? I can look at so many uh, new metrics now. Uh, just give you a few examples, right? Now we have data freshness and latency by stage, right? Um, you can see duplicates. Imagine if you're reading from PubSub and uh, Dataflow is processing them 
and you know PubSub is producing much you know faster than uh, your data or the incoming data is faster than the, your job can handle them there could be duplicates so you want to see how much time uh, is spent by um, data for job in getting and uh, filtering out these duplicates so the, there are metrics like duplicates that help you understand what's going on user processing latencies so uh, you would want to know how much time is actually if there's latency is increasing overall latency is increasing you want to know how much time is spent in actually processing my user code as a distribution right um, so you could look at the user processing latencies metric uh, if your job has uh, windows so windowing like five minute windows 10 minute windows you have the metric uh, about timers so you can look at timers fired uh, to see are my windows triggering on time similarly we have more metrics around um, you know the sinks such as uh, PubSub and io we are adding more metrics but we started with a couple of metrics to help you with uh, hey, are my writes uh, happening at the right time for BigQuery on PubSub, et cetera? Um, so anyway, so uh, take a look at these new metrics if you are using Streaming Engine. Um, and uh, you know, I would love to hear more what other metrics we could add. Uh, another feature to make you understand logs better, right? the error specifically from logs better, is our seamless integration with Google's cloud error reporting. So, uh, several customers in the past have spoken about, hey, logs are everywhere. Some, I'm sorry, errors are everywhere. Sometimes they're very uh, hairy and it's hard to manage and uh, you know understand which errors are more important versus the others, etc. Well, good news is in, your, in our diagnostic tab, right, all the errors are clubbed and managed in a in a structured way uh, based on their uh, you know the the the, the occurrence, the count, etc. Right. And with this integration, you can easily detect the high frequency errors, uh, time of first occurrence, et cetera, over time. You can look at troubleshooting guides for these common errors. And mo most of the known errors, we have integrated the troubleshooting guides with cloud error reporting. So your teams can quickly look at that. And you can manage them easily as bugs. So you can create bugs out of them for tracking and you know, assign it to your dev team. Uh, um, and you know they can easily say, yeah, acknowledged, yeah, understood. Uh, or say this error is benign, this is going away in the next deployment, so you can mark it as a result, right? Um, so now next step is, hey, I uh, looked at errors, metrics, logs. Sure, I want to understand what is happening in my code uh, that could be uh, leading to some you know, long pending operations or you know, consuming more CPU uh, than expected or uh, using more memory. Well, uh, Dataflow comes with a, a seamless integration with Google uh, Cloud Profiler. So with, with a single flag, you can update your pipeline, uh, each batch or streaming both. You can update your pipeline to turn on profiling. Um, profiling is, uh, you know, it's, it's a low resource utilized, uh, utilization uh, you know, service. So you can just run it without impacting the performance of your pipelines. Uh, and it collects, uh, you know, profiles. Uh, so you can view the flame graph and you can look at the CPU wall time as well as heat profiling. Uh, heat profiling is supported only for Java because cloud profiling doesn't support uh, um, um, uh, heat profiling for Python yet. But that is, yes, that is an ask uh, that we are following up with them on. And so, again, you can use them for batch and streaming, and you can dig deeper and understand, you know, uh, what's the percentage of CPU cycles spent in my user code versus uh, the system code. Um, Next, a brand new feature we introduced uh, just weeks ago. And we, I, in fact, we rolled out, uh, we started rolling it out much earlier, but uh, just rollout complete happened a few weeks ago uh, is Dataflow Insights. Uh, and the context here is customers have been uh, asking about, hey, you, know, you folks have been seeing our Dataflow jobs. What can you tell us more about improving performance and reducing costs uh, based on all the intelligence and knowledge you have gathered? So we automated it. We call that well, data flow insights or recommendations, right? These recommendations, AKA insights, are auto-generated and enabled and are free of charge, right? They start appearing for your batch and streaming jobs if applicable insights are available, right? Um, and as you can see right there, when you look at the jobs, you can see, hey, there is a new insight for me and you can click on that to learn more. Uh, they are also available in your 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 global recommend uh, Google Cloud recommendations, and we'll 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 show some of the demo uh, uh, demos for these. We have five insights available. Um, you know, insights such as, hey, auto scaling can be turned on, and you could save more here. Uh, hey, we saw that you are hitting uh, high CPU usage. We could probably improve uh, your max number of workers and get much better performance if it's a streaming job. 
um, you know, more insights such as um, uh, uh, out of memory uh, exception preventions, quotas, you're likely to hit quotas, so you should probably uh, go and update and improve your limits, et cetera, are all on the way. And we would love your feedback to see other kind of uh, insights or recommendations you would want to see so that go, we can go you know, brainstorm about that and bring those as new features. Uh, last but not least, a brand new feature um, is our integration with Datadog. So many of our customers have been asking about, hey, we are using Dataflow. We are using so many of our data, uh, Google data products and other services, but we would love to monitor data flow in the favorite monitoring tool of our choice. Well, good news is all the data flow metrics, logs, all of those are available uh, to be exported using the Google Cloud monitoring and logging APIs, right? Um, and so you can use them in any tool of your choice. And Datadog has already uh, uh, done you know, uh, integration with the uh, Google Cloud monitoring and logging APIs. But when we reached out to the awesome team at Datadog, they said, yep, let, why don't we make this much easier for our mutual customers? So they, uh, you know, uh, working closely with Paul Conrad, who is one of our speakers here, um, they built a out of the box uh, dashboard for data flow uh, and recommended monitors so that getting started is so easy whether it's batch job or streaming job, the most important metrics uh, that Conrad and the Datadog team work together on are now available uh, right in front of you uh, without having to configure anything as out of the box dashboards. And the most important metrics uh, where you may want to create SLOs on are also available as recommended monitors. So, uh, well, thank you Datadog team uh, for helping us get there. And uh, based on your feedback, we would love to do more integrations such as these uh, going forward. So do let us know. You know, which ones are you looking or thinking about next? So one last thing before we go into demos is, um, you know, how should I think about monitoring data, data flow, and where do I start? Um, I would say, you know, treat data flow uh, jobs just like any other um, distributed or cloud native application, right? You start with your golden signals, and then you go deeper as needed, right? So is there a problem? So you would probably be looking at uh, latency, traffic, error, and saturation. So let me break that down. Latency as in you could look at data freshness or uh, system latency. Is my job processing data uh, you know, as expected, or is, is there stuckness happening in my, well, in case of streaming pipeline, is, is it getting stuck, or is it piling up latency? Um, you could look at traffic, which is basically throughput. right? OK, is my job producing um, uh, data as expected? Are there errors, you know, job errors or work errors? We highlight them, so it's easy for you to look at them. Uh, are there errors happening? And you can create alerts on these two, right? Uh, and finally, saturation. Well, in other words, how is data flow utilizing the resources? You can look at CPU metrics and memory metrics there. You, even uh, um, the persistent read write metrics are probably useful as well to see if you're actually hitting limits or is it going way beyond, um, you know, the allocation uh, for you. And once you know about these, you can dig deeper using some of these troubleshooting metrics we spoke about. You can go deeper into the logs. Um, you know, you can um, you know query. You can you can interact with the logs using the Google Cloud logging. And like we saw uh, a few minutes back, you can dig deeper into your code using Profile. So uh, with that, let's uh, um, switch from the presentation to uh, a demo. So let me go back. And share. Okay. All right. Uh, Conrad, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Uh, not yet, Ashman. Oh, now we can. All right. So let's give a super quick rundown of some of these features that we spoke about, right? Um, and we'll talk more about them as we go deeper into troubleshooting. So here I am in my uh, you know, Google Cloud Console. I can go to Dataflow. I have uh, you know, all these options here. But I would be looking at the Jobs page, where I have the Jobs overview. These are my, you know, while well, I have just streaming jobs here, unfortunately, uh, not no batch yet. 
Um, um, so all these jobs are running and I can look at, you know, the status of any of these jobs quickly. I can also create a job from template. Well, you, you could uh, write your own job using Java SDK uh, or Python or uh, Go in your favorite IDE. But, you know, I could also go and create a job if I don't want to write code and create one quickly using the templates, right? So I can uh, give a name, uh, whatever, and I can select one of these templates that has a source and a sync and, uh, you know, get going with it. Right, so I uh, can send from like PubSub to Mongo or you know anything from like GCS to Elastic. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Google Cloud, uh, the data flow also comes with a lot of integrations with uh, third party uh, services such as Elastic, uh, AWS and all that. So you can send data from, uh, bring data in or send data to uh, third party services as well. And these are the input and output are not just Google uh, uh, you know, uh, services. So, you know, uh, we're not going to the details of creating a job. We spoke about, um, you know, once you build your job, what can I see? So once you build your job and you deploy a job and it's running, you know, well, you can see the uh, job is uh, executing here. Um, and let me go in. Let me go into a sample job. This job is a very basic one. It's reading from PubSub, doing some basic operations. Uh, writing error records into a uh, um, you know table as well as the the the, the right output results also uh, into into BigQuery. So here I can see the job graph like I explained earlier. You can go from um, uh, you know this uh, each each node to the other, and you could see input output collections, the throughput as well as data freshness since it's a uh, streaming job. Um, you could move from the graph view to the table view where actually you can see the steps and they're mapping to a stage. Sometimes you can say, well, you're showing by stages, but what steps are, are mapped to those? Because steps are what are present in my code. So you can see the mapping here, uh, the time taken in each of those. Uh, you could go to execution details. Uh, and, and for this, uh, you can see the uh, there is uh, you know um, uh, the data freshness over time as the job executes, and you can see the time spent in each of the stages. Uh, let's look at uh one day range uh let's see if there are things well there you go this job uh, as i highlighted earlier we automatically detect anomalies potential anomalies such as slowness or stuckness and we highlight them for you right so now it's easy for you to go and uh, zoom in okay well there were some issues happening here let me just uh click here or zoom in uh into that area well something is wrong with my there you go you can zoom in in that area and think and look more into what's happening in each stage. If I click on each stage, I can see all the uh, components or the steps within that stage here. And at the bottom, I can see the time spent uh, in each of the stage when when that particular stage was executing. Right? So I can filter and see which is the longest running operation in that stage. Now um, I can move over to well, what is the last operation um, option here? Is also to look at them as just a stage workflow. And you can see the data freshness at any given point in time, like right now, when you when you look at that view. You can move over to uh, job index quite easily, and uh, you can look at all the common metrics that tell you about the performance of the job. Uh, on top, we have auto scaling. So, well, this this uh, um, a job required uh, more workers as more you know uh, uh, input or data came in, so it auto scaled, um, and it had to process the uh, incoming workload quickly. So, uh, well, as you can see that there is the current workers with one and uh, target workers that are auto scaling this, uh, sorry, uh, data flow decided to have was what, 46, and then it allocated 34. Why is that? Well, interesting. Let's hold that thought and we'll come back and explain why there is a difference between, uh, you know, current workers uh, and data flow. Uh, so, sorry, the target workers. So, you can uh, go down and see, hey, suddenly there was a spike in data freshness. Um, most likely there was a spike in system latency as well because you know data flow took more time to process uh, you know the incoming workload and each stage was busy doing performing work so that's happening but if you look at throughput uh, you can also see uh, sorry let me look at backlog if you look at backlog you can see the backlog seconds and backlog bytes so the the amount of bytes waiting to be processed suddenly shot up and uh, data flow decided well I need to sort of scale and uh, you know, get this work done quickly for you. Uh, so that's what happened. And you can also see the throughput also will rise, therefore. Right? Um, yep, the throughput started rising. More workers, more work is being done. 
uh, and, uh, and now suddenly the uh, job is processing more data. Um, you, uh, as I explained earlier, you can look at all those things. Now this this pipeline, I don't believe, I don't know whether it has duplicates, and maybe, yes. So you have duplicates coming in. It's a probably a rare event, but there are duplicates happening. So keep in mind, Dataflow is uh, spending time processing duplicates. Uh, similarly, you can look at um, you know the resource utilization metrics, such as uh, CPU. So now as new workers get allocated, as you can see here clearly, right? there was one worker, uh, its um, usage shot up uh, pretty high. And uh, um, you know the other workers came in and started uh, you know taking over the workload, and you know then they started processing all of them. Uh, at the bottom of the page, you do have logs. Um, so there are job logs. Well, this doesn't have much many useful logs, but job logs, worker logs, and then diagnostics. Right. Well, uh, speaking of uh, the reason why um, auto scaling, uh, you know the the job could not allocate all the workers. Here is a useful log here. Right. Auto scaling, unable to reach the target size because of quota issues. So I exceeded the quotas within this particular region because I have several jobs running. And so now, uh, you know, data flow, although data flow said, well, we should allocate so many workers to process this job faster based on an algorithm, uh, we were not able to uh, allocate so many workers. It was not able to allocate so many workers because it ran out of quotas, the CPU quotas. And we'll talk about more of that, uh, more about that when we go into the troubleshooting section. Um, let's switch and talk about um, uh, cloud error logging. So for that, let me just switch over to uh, one of uh, Waze projects here and see if I can show you a more useful uh, you know, log or error that is integrated with cloud error reporting. Um, and here in diagnostics, Oh, not not many errors for this one. So let me see. Maybe. Ashwood, if you want to go to a previous execution of the job, so go back. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to show you one of the more useful errors. Should I pick the second one? Uh, no, the third one. You see the retail, yeah. the one I stopped. That one yeah. has a. Yeah, that one has a bunch of those errors. Yeah. That one has errors. Okay, there you go. Well, it's just well, it's probably a fake error. You have 20, 224,000 errors for the same same one. So yeah, so so as you can clearly see, uh, imagine even if it has five errors or ten errors, it's all accumulated in one place. Uh, you have uh, an easy way to just look at the error, what's happening. Now in this case, um, Dataflow just made it easy to go deeper into that error, uh, and it's integrated with Google Cloud Error Reporting. So well, number of occurrences first seen. Uh, you know how frequently is it happening over time, and then you can go to this sample stack trace of all of that. This is open. Uh, you can say if you have seen this and you have resolved it, and it's going to go away anyways. You can acknowledge and mute it and all that stuff. Uh, you could create a link to this issue and send it uh, send it as a bug to your uh, dev team, and you know you know that they can dig deeper into it. Uh, two more uh, things quickly. I think we are running behind on time. Um, is uh, uh, Insights and profiling, right? I want to talk about uh, insights quickly. Sorry, uh, profiling quickly. Uh, so here is a super, super quick uh, demo of a uh, pipeline that has uh, uh, profiling already done, and how easily you can uh, find the the flame graph and profiling. I'll, I'll I'll give you a sneak peek at that. So here is a job that was executed. Uh, and my, well, this one has more errors actually to also look at. Um, so when, after my teammate uh, ran this uh, uh, job in profiling mode, he was able to see the profiler graph right here, right? We made it available easily for you to configure, uh, easily for you to consume, and then look at the flame graph. So you can look at um, the CPU, CPU time, uh, flame graph as well as um, uh, wall time as well as heap profiling whichever whichever you have configured so they go to heap and because i believe he did memory profiling if you go to heap uh oh <laughs> my pages are not responding um, 
was a lot of heat memory usage. <laughs> I think there's a lot of memory usage. Okay, so that was my last one. Uh, Conrad, if you want to quickly talk about um, take over and talk about the data dog one, and then I can give a, I can fix it and come back and give um, a, a quick demo of insights. Sure. Yeah. No worries. Uh, thanks, Ashwin. Uh, so we're very excited to bring you uh, with, uh, this Datadog um, new Dataflow dashboard. Uh, we've been working with them closely to try and bring um, an out of the box experience um, for monitoring Dataflow jobs. So you can see here when you uh, when you navigate to the dashboard list, you're presented with a lot of um, uh, Google Cloud uh, specific dashboards. Uh, the data flow one is the one that we added recently, but you can see that some dependent services live in here as well, such as PubSub um, and uh, GCS as well should be here um, somewhere. But going into the data flow dashboard, we're presented with uh, something that looks like this. So you can instantly see how many failed jobs uh, you have um, and an easy way to actually go through them all. This is a test project, so we have a lot of, uh, we run thousands of jobs. Uh, so. Um, most likely you won't have 169 failed jobs, but going through this um, nice little widget that they have, it's very easy to identify which jobs have failed, um, as well as longest running jobs. Um, this could be useful for finding uh, some long running streaming jobs or long running batch jobs. Um, going down the list, there's a few sections. So uh, we want to really highlight the streaming metrics here, which, um, which uh, Ashwin talked about a little bit earlier. So the, this, this is the latest addition to the, the metrics that we've um, started reporting. Uh, we have a very important metric here, which is the estimated backlog processing time. Uh, so this will show you a breakdown by job ID um, that the highest, uh, the highest backlogged pipelines. Um, element backlog by stage. So this breaks it down even further. You can see the job ID in the stage next to it. Uh, and then parallelism as well. So you can instantly see all of these um, jobs. If you scroll down, all of these jobs at the bottom have low parallelism. So it might be something worth investigating. Uh, storage bytes by stage. So here you have um, your persistent disk uh, writing. Uh, you can see that uh, maybe there's some outliers. You can find them uh, quickly. Um, yeah, likewise, max uh, streaming data process by job and duplicates being filtered. Obviously, if there's a high amount of duplicates, then um, data flow is spending a lot of work uh, deduping messages, which could be better spent otherwise. So maybe you should restructure your data there. Uh, standard metrics, these are uh, applicable to both batch and streaming. So we have top P collections, um, current number of vCPUs, um, jobs with highest processing duration, uh, things like that. that. That should really help you. and. And as I said, again, the, this is thousands of jobs all writing um, uh, at least 20 P collections each. So you can see why it took so long to load, um, but uh, it's still very fast to load that, mu that much at once. Um, the UI is very responsive. Um, the infrastructure map is very unique to, uh, uh, to Datadog. It allows you to like quickly look at um, which which GCE uh, instances are running at any moment, um, and it, it's it's a really fast way of uh, detecting um, if some VMs are crashing. Uh, the data flow GCE superialization, likewise, this this is kind of like a heat map, a distribution which will show you um, any outliers for uh, CPU utilization as a whole. Um, auto scaling. So th this will show you as your horizontal auto scaling kicks in, you'll have more workers um, rather than less, and so on. Um, to, uh, to to put everything in one place um, and make it more seamless, they've introduced logging as well. So the logging, you uh, we need some additional uh, integration, uh, some. Uh, additional uh, service accounts, which we haven't set up here, but it's very quick to, to do that as well. And you'll get a full list of logs there. Uh, data freshness and latency, you're probably already familiar with these ones, but this will this is a nice aggregation um, across all jobs that you have in, in across projects as well. Uh, the top actually lets you filter by, uh, by projects as well as by jobs as well. Um, so that lets you have a more granular view of your data. Um, Additionally, we've actually introduced some uh, templated monitoring. Um, so uh, 
so monitors in Datadog are the same as alerts in GCP. Uh, and we've added some uh, very useful ones such as backlog seconds are high on a specific job, uh, data flow batch job has failed, or max system latency for a job is high. Uh, and these alerts will can, can be configured to send emails, text messages, um, as well as a few other useful options. I think they're integrated with Slack, for example. Um, and uh, an, an example alert looks something like this. Uh, we, we've tried to add some debugging steps uh, for your convenience, uh, but it's it's very useful just seeing how often these alerts do fire. So scrolling to the top, you can see this nice uh, chart uh, historical date range. Uh, you can slide this window to see how often uh, and how long your alerts are. Um, and uh, finally, we've added a very convenient link uh, by clicking on this, uh, it'll actually take you directly to the job details page in the in the uh, cloud console. Uh, so that will allow you to really dig much deeper and use some of those features that uh, Ashwin just uh, presented. Cool. Thank you, Conrad. So um, let me take back the control. Um, we, I think we are very close to... Uh, the end of the session. So let's talk more about uh, troubleshooting common cases. But before that, I, I happen to see a couple of questions. Uh, I want to answer that. Uh, so um, Splunk, yes. So we do have a Splunk template uh, for data flow jobs. So I think uh, I, I, I don't recall what the input sources are, but I believe it's writing to Splunk. And yes, uh, the team has worked uh, to add additional custom metrics to help you understand what's going on in that particular template that's writing into Splunk. Uh, I, uh, if you search for the Splunk monitoring template and data flow, uh, the data flow in, in Google, you would probably find the blog post that one of our cloud solution architects wrote about it. Uh, but definitely maybe as a response to this uh, you know, uh, video, we would love to put that, uh, that link out there so that uh, if it is helpful. Uh, Ayush has a question on data freshness. It is a simple way to understand data freshness. Just assume your data flow job is reading from PubSub. And it's continuously reading, right? Um, all the data freshness is telling you is all the data till time t has been processed by data flow. And that time t versus time now is that lag that you're seeing as data freshness, if that makes sense. So if you're seeing data freshness as 45 minutes for some, well, let's say 45 seconds, all that tells you is all the data till the you know uh, t current time minus 45 seconds has been processed by data flow so how far behind is your pipeline with respect to the incoming data yes yes it is related yes data freshness is related to the incoming data or your data's timestamp right uh, and there are various we can probably send you more details around that uh, but there are you know it depends on the publish time of the pubsub or it probably depends on the source event time that you have embedded into your message. System latency, on the other hand, actually talks about the time spent actually processing or the elements have spent time processing or being, uh, you know, waiting for to be processed within the various stages of the pipeline. So that actually talks about how much time the pipeline is taking to process your, uh, your, 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 your data. And the other one actually talks about how far behind your data is the pipeline. Okay. Uh, so in the interest of time, let me jump to the troubleshooting common cases. So uh, I think we spoke about this already and I showed you in the demo, right? You know, it's a natural scenario where, you know, there is more data that is coming in and, uh, uh, you know, the data flow has to auto scale and, and, and process the incoming data. So if auto scaling is happening and still it's lagging behind and you feel like, hey, it should have gone faster. There are many such troubleshooting metrics that we spoke about you should look at. You could look at parallelism. There is a metric about parallelism. Let's say, hey, are there enough sufficient keys that can be parallelized across these uh, various workers? Uh, you know, what time is it taking between my uh, uh, my code? Actually, is my code actually spending more time processing this? Duplicates. If there are duplicates produced, then you know, data flow has to spend more time deduping those. You know, data, remember, data flow is an exactly once uh, processing a mechanism by default, whereas PubSub goes with the at least once delivery model. So if PubSub is continuously trying to send you more records, uh, then uh, you know Dataflow is probably trying to dedupe some of these records for you. Um, you know, so 
you can look at those metrics, the sync metrics, the IO metrics, if you're writing the pub, BigQuery, GCS, PubSub, you should look at those metrics as well uh, as more data come through. So uh, we spoke about starting with the golden signals and going through some of these troubleshooting metrics to see where probably exactly is the bottleneck or what is causing latency or so. Another issue that I want to talk about is um, uh, that many of our customers often hit and they say, well, I didn't understand this was the issue, is quotas or throttling, right? So if you go to your console today, and if you look at, if you search for just uh, quotas, and if you click on compute, um, uh, you know, you would see, uh, you know, the, your, how close you are with respect to your CPU limits, the CPUs for those region, or even like in-use IP, uh, the, uh, you know, address limits for that region, uh, even your persistent read, uh, write API call limits, et cetera, right? So these limits can come in your way because, you know, if you're getting throttled in any of those places, well, that will data flow will still continue to execute, right? We're going to it is smart enough to auto heal and continue all that, but it's going to impact your performance. So here I have examples in the, in the screenshot where you know uh, remember the auto scaling issue I spoke to you about. Um, you know, uh, well, it was trying to allocate more compute, but you know I was hitting the limits, the quotas for uh, for that region. Uh, similarly, uh, on the right hand side, I have occasionally hit IP address uh, limits. Uh, and if this continues, uh, then you know it's probably going to impact my performance, right? Uh, my pipeline performance. So uh, it, this this is signs that I probably need to go and increase my limits or discuss, you know, what I can do about it with my uh, infra team. Uh, Conrad, uh, would you want to, um, uh, or I can talk about this one, and then you know next one, Conrad can talk about. So uh, Ooms, I think we already showed you how you can understand uh, if you have uh, memory issues or like any, uh, uh, like you know how to do your key profiling and look at memory issues but how do you understand whether there are memory issues right i mean uh, remember in the graph you have the cpu metrics and memory metrics for those workers if you look at the memory uh, utilization metrics you can see here in this graph i have captured a screenshot occasionally the max memory usage is hitting uh, the total capacity total capacity across all workers, right? So max memory is hitting the capacity. So uh, you definitely want to keep an eye on this. Uh, and if this is happening, it probably are hitting uh, OOM issues. And you can see immediately the memory falls right after that. You know why? The workers goes down because they OOMed. Uh, and well, Dataflow brought in new workers and took care of it, but you are losing time and your, your, your pipeline is probably lagging or falling behind when this is happening. Right. Well, coming soon, my teammate uh, uh, is actually working on um, providing a guide for memory observability, better OOM detection and prevention. So, um, you know, we'll have more information on that published pretty soon. Conrad, if you want to cover these. Cool. Yeah, I can take over here. Um, so in Dataflow, one of the fundamental operations is a group by key. Uh, this uh, shuffles keys onto the same machine and oftentimes even the same worker thread. Um, so to perform, and this allows performing aggregations such as sum, max, mean, uh, et cetera. A hotkey is a key which cannot be uniformly uh, distributed across multiple machines. Uh, so a good example of this is, for example, counting the amount of, uh, counting the uh, types of browsers that um, go to your website. Uh, in this case, there's only four or five major browsers. So you, uh, you, you essentially, you only have four or five different keys. One key would be Chrome, another key would be Safari, and so so forth. Uh, so this causes uh, some workers uh, to uh, do more heavy lifting than others, um, and increasing the amount of machines is just going to increase uh, the amount of idle uh, machines. Uh, so Dataflow has multiple techniques for debugging um, uh, debugging hotkeys, and they vary for batch versus streaming. Uh, so uh, Ashwin showed you some of those new metrics. Um, you might notice that your throughput remains relatively high. Uh, so I can actually show you here. Um, this is an example job that does have a hotkey in streaming. You can see that your throughput actually remains relatively high across all workers. But if we dig deeper and we go into our data freshness, uh, we realize like something is not right. Um, we're losing, well, uh, we have, we're seeing a high data freshness in some of the stages. Uh, so what we can now do is either the first step is probably go to the CPU utilization. Uh, here, the stats uh, view is very useful. You can actually see, uh, sorry, the top four view is very useful. You can actually see that one worker is at 75% while the other ones are at 12%. So this indicates that there is a, ho a hockey on this um, worker potentially. 
Um, but to, to further uh, figure that out, we can actually go to the parallelism chart. And here you can actually see that um, during that same time frame, our parallelism really dropped. So we went from uh, four megabytes uh, per second, uh, four keys, uh, mega keys for, per second, so a thousand, uh, a million keys per second, to just 0 0.02. Um, so that definitely indicates a problem. Um, and we can actually see which stage that problem's at. So in this case, F15 is really um, uh, the outlier here. Uh, so now going through to the execution, de execution details tab, we can filter f15 because that's the one that we care about uh, so here we can actually see f15 at this time um, and going down we can see which uh which steps are actually involved in that so let's look, click on that and we can see there's a group by key operation here in fact um and and so solving this is actually um the, the way we can solve this is actually by introducing uh, a pre-combiner so a precombiner is essentially a local group by key, uh, which uh, which allows you to um, uh, do some local aggregations on the previous workers as closer to the source um, as data comes in, uh, and then push that along uh, into an and adds an extra step in your pipeline, which will then um, allow the workers to process some pre-aggregated data. Um, at the target worker. So adding these steps can really help. Um, an another good strategy is actually just restructuring your data. So going back to the uh, previous example, we had our, our browsers. So we had Chrome and Safari, but now maybe we could add a version number as well. So we could do browser plus version number, and that would give us a more unique key. Um, and then we do a final aggregation at the end as well. Uh, so, so uh, that definitely works. And uh, another uh, option actually is if you're using batch, you can turn on something called hotkey logging. Um, so this will actually log the exact name of the hotkey. Uh, so going to a batch job now, um, if you access the diagnostics tab, you can actually see a hotkey um, named my hotkey was detected in a specific step. So this will really allow you to um, optimize your data um, in a way that um, we'll reduce the hotkeys. Cool. That's uh, that's what I had for that section. Um, moving on, we have uh, some user code um, uh, diagnostics. So uh, the first, the um, when when implementing custom sources, it's very important to implement get progress. Uh, uh, the reason for that is um, a, a, a lot of metrics rely on the progress. So backlog and system latency, they will actually not report correctly unless you implement get progress correctly. Uh, and this uh, this allows you to actually uh, be able to use the UI eff effectively. Um, the system latency shows delays from your input sources. It's, it's uh, related to data freshness, but it can actually show you additional information, um, such as uh, how, how long your data has been stuck in IO versus um, uh, versus the event timestamp. Um, if the system latency is constantly growing, that can be a system of blocked IO, and uh, you should potentially look into optimizing user code. Uh, maybe you have a hotkey, or maybe you should be batching an API. Uh, user processing latency is the time the workers spend in processing user code. If high latency is detected in a particular stage, the execution details tab can be used to find that related step um, and then you can use the cloud profiler to debug even deeper into the stack traces. Uh, and for Java, that actually includes a uh, heap memory dump as well. Uh, introducing a fusion break can be very useful, uh, uh, especially if you have a high fan out situation where one stage uh, transforms into multiple, uh, multiple elements. Um, and in that case, adding a reshuffle step before your current stage can help increase parallelism. Optimizing these bottlenecks and more can improve the overall performance of your job. Uh, yeah, so we have an example down the bottom of some uh, some logs that can help you uh, debug your jobs. So job spelling to start. Uh, this is a common issue uh, when encountering uh, when writing new jobs in Dataflow. Uh, so you you'll see something like this where your job fails, um, the status will be failed. 
Uh, and you can debug further by going into the logs, um, as well as other as other metrics, the diagnostics tab, etc. Uh, the first thing to check is to make sure that you have correct permissions um, for for to even be able to access the APIs or even the UI. The user needs to have the Dataflow uh, writer or admin role. Um, well, to access the UI, you just need the viewer role. Um, but after that. Uh, to to start um, to access the UI, you just need to uh, to start compute um, instances. Dataflow actually requires the um, Dataflow uh, uh, worker role, so this will allow your GCE instances to start up, um, as well as a few other things. If you want to monitor logs and um, metrics, you also require the cloud monitoring viewer and logging role. So you might be uh, when you start up a job, you'll be presented with some uh, with an error potentially. Uh, so the errors should be explained in detail. In this case, the compute service account is required uh, is missing this data flow worker role. So you could go to IM and actually fix that. Um, I can show you an example of that. So we have this compute service role um, and it has the data flow worker role. But if you do want to change that, you can just update it here. Um, and uh, lastly. Uh, there's uh, uh, if you're encountering auto scaling issues, um, you can uh, you can fix those by having um, uh, so, uh, by first checking if auto scaling is enabled. So auto scaling enabled can be checked in the UI here. Um, you can see horizontal auto scaling is disabled, um, and uh, common debugging issues uh, include aggressive auto scaling. So uh, if there's uh, aggressive um, upscaling, this is most likely an IO bound issue. Um, you could be bottlenecked on external dependencies. Um, and uh, usually these will automatically uh, stabilize, but um, you, sh you should, uh, you should uh, probably uh, optimize your max number of workers um, so that you're not aggressively upscaling. Uh, downscaling uh, requires CPU to be low back uh, to to be um, low uh, for two minutes. If that's not the case, um, then um, uh, uh, Ashwin, could you take over for a second? Um, I'm having uh, some technical issues. Uh, sorry. Just ask when you need to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks, Conrad. So I want to go back and quickly talk uh, for a few seconds about Insights, the new feature that we announced uh, before my UI was, you know, uh, crashing or you know failing to load. So here is my, uh, you know, so, uh, there is another project where I have so many jobs, and as you can see here, I do have Insights that automatically pop up. Uh, clicking on those, I can go detail. Uh, can dig deep, deep, deeper. It says auto scaling can be enabled. Another one says auto scaling can be enabled. Uh, I could go into uh, the 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 recommendations page, which is the central recommendations um, that is shown by um, Google Cloud Console for across all your uh, projects. Um, so here uh, I can see that hey, well, recommendations across. Uh, all your you know, cloud services come up here in the recommendation space, right? Uh, it is a service by Google Active Assist uh, recommender service. But here you can see the recommendations for data flow uh, jobs. I have many jobs running, so I have a lot of these recommendations, the 69 insights available. So let's go in and see what's happening. Um, here I can see uh, for a particular job, you know, well, auto scaling can be enabled. That's an insight. Uh, and it talks about the job. Uh, another one talks about, you know, well, my Python SDK and the images that I can use, and uh, I can probably improve my startup worker startup faster by, you know, by changing this. Uh, let me look at another one, which is probably useful. A fusion break can be inserted uh, here to increase parallelism. So here, another uh, insight for you to improve um, um, the um, performance of your pipeline. Uh, another one. A job auto scaling, you know, CPU utilization is consistently hitting 86%, and you have set a limit uh, for 50. Increasing this could improve performance. So, well, I could click on this. I can go into the details uh, and read more about it. And you you look at the job documentation or the guidance that that this insight is providing, uh, and you could even dismiss this and say, well, 
I know about this. Don't 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 show this to me anymore anytime. Okay, so uh, switching back uh, to uh, the, uh, the 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 presentation, I want to talk in the last few uh, minutes about uh, what is coming soon. Uh, what's next in the roadmap? Uh, and um, you know, we have a lot you know lot more things that we are working on. We believe you know uh, with all these capabilities, um, you know, Dataflow is an industry leading. Uh, uh, has an industry-leading observability capability out there. I mean, but we are just getting started, right? And you know, we get uh, feedback from you that we could go deeper, uh, make some of those things uh, more clearer, uh, make it easier to use. Definitely, you know, we are working hard on that. But here are some of the big features that are on our list. Memory observability, we spoke about that. Uh, we are uh, improving hotkey visualization so that you can easily detect those hotkeys uh, Conrad was talking about. Uh, more sources and syncs, uh, metrics, end-to-end -end latency metrics, more insights and you know definitely anything to help you save money improve performance we are going to find more insights and uh, you know uh, uh, publish them uh, data sampling many many at many a times customers want to see what's happening at any given point in time in uh, in a particular stage with respect to the data or how does an element look like is it malformed or is it you know is it the same element or record as i expected so you can look at that using data sampling and last but not least you know uh, we would uh, want to do uh, uh more investments around project level monitoring you know how do you want to monitor at scale when you have several hundreds or thousands of concurrent jobs running you know it can be hairy so how do you go uh top down and looking at the top level uh, view of monitoring uh for all these jobs and then going deeper into which jobs actually need my attention so anyway um you know uh, those are some of those things that we are working on uh, please please take that feedback we'll give you links to all these uh, uh you know uh, resources um as a follow-up uh, but please do take the survey, uh, share your feedback, and see what we can do better. So uh, with that, I'll uh, pass back to Roderick. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashwin and Conrad, for making time for the community to talk about the amazing work that you guys are doing. I will echo those sentiments. Please, please take the survey. Let us know if you found this information valuable so that we can set up more sessions like this just for you. There were a number of questions that came through that unfortunately we didn't have the time to get to. We went a little bit over because we wanted to make sure that you got the information. But in our recap, we will make sure that in the recap and in the details that will accompany the replay of this video that you get the answers. So again, thank you so much for coming. We'll see you in the community. Thanks everyone.